don't know why I'm whispering for this apology, but it was pointed out to me by someone after last week's conversation that I was wrong and that romance writers everywhere were adding social commentary to their books, which is awesome. And so to every romance writer out there, I apologize. <laughs> I don't know why I'm whispering. But the apology was sincere. I have no idea why I said that. Well, I know why I said that. But I was wrong. And I'm glad that someone pointed it out to me. And I am especially happy that romance writers everywhere are taking the opportunity to add social commentary to their work because it's important. It is very important that we raise our voices to the world to hear. Now, that's not what I want to talk about, Muse. I wanted to start off with that because I felt like the onus was on me to apologize because, well, I'm certainly not above admitting that I was wrong about something. Which leads me to what I really want to talk about. I'm working on fear, which is kind of a new take on the post-apocalyptic genre. Probably not new. It's all been done. Um, but, uh, at some point this past week, I, I wrote a scene for this book. And as I was writing it, I, 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 I knew that something was amiss. I didn't quite know what. But the next day, I, I, as, is, as I am wont to do, I, I, I obsessed over what I wrote the previous night. And I realized what I had written was a huge mistake. And what I had done was given my characters the easy way out. Now, this is kind of a tricky point here because you can't always make everything incredibly difficult for your characters. Now, that's that's not to say that I, 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 know, I know people out there, and I, I feel so sorry for them, but I know people out there, life just always seems to be nothing but a challenge, and, and it's, it's terrible, and, and I, I feel horrible for those people, and I, you just, you just want to step in and help them at every turn. Of course, you can't because you would spend your life helping them and not be able to get anything done in your own life or help yourself, but that's not the point. The point is that I realized that I had made a mistake and that I couldn't, even though I was at kind of that point in the novel where everything was building to the climax, I couldn't with good conscience just say, hey, here's a gimme characters. You're about, everything's about really ready to hit the fan. Here's the easy way out. You can't do that. Especially considering this is a post-apocalyptic novel. And, and here's, here's what I tend to do when I'm writing such stories. You have to throw yourself into their given circumstances. We've all, every one of us, have known hardships. We've all had times in our lives where everything just seems to be difficult. But I would venture to say that very few of us have, especially in first world countries, I should preface that by saying, preface this, but very few of us have actually experienced apocalyptic level difficulties. We're talking about global food shortages, lack of power, there being a monster, a monsters out there 
ready to take us down at every corner. So I try very hard to throw myself into their situation and think what would what would this experience be like? Let's let's say that you're trying to locate those in your party party to make sure they're safe. Now, if this were today, it'd be pretty simple. You'd pick up your cell phone, boop, 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 call them and say, hey, are you safe? And they would say, yes, I'm safe. Boop, good, everything's great. But this is the apocalypse. You can't pick up your cell phone. In theory, you can't pick up your cell phone and call them. So you have to hunt for them. But you're hunting for them in a very dangerous world. So you have to start throwing yourself into those <clears throat> what ifs and imaginary circumstances to say, how difficult would this truly be? How difficult would this normally fairly mundane task be if you layer in all of these challenges? You're not gonna, things are not just going to be handed to you. So I went back to that scene during my next writing session and I said, what do I have to do to make this, make this believable in this fictional universe? And I'm trying to be cryptic about it because I don't want to give anything away, but let's just say, for example, <clears throat> main character said, was able to send out a message somehow to say, everybody meet here. Okay. So let's say that's what I did. And then I, my intention was to, all of a sudden everybody's there. And now you have safety in numbers. That's the easy way out. So what if instead this, this main character was able to get that message out to people not knowing if they got it or understood the message because he had to be cryptic about it because the monsters were there and the monsters are sentient and conscious. So he doesn't know that they got the message and yet he still has to make it to that place. And what if he makes it to that place and, ex and in the process of making it to that place, he then encounters the usual hurdles and then he makes it to that place Nobody's there. His plan failed. So I threw a failure into the mix. So then they would have to make another plan. And that's kind of way the, I, I think that if we all of a sudden found ourselves in a post-apocalyptic landscape, I have a feeling that that's how things would work. We would say, we have plan A, let's execute plan A. Oh crap, plan A didn't work. Let's make plan B. Oh no, plan B didn't work. What are we going to do? Plan C. Hey, plan C worked. So when you're writing these scenes, especially what we're talking about fiction and genre fiction, especially horror and, and, and post-apocalyptic kind of horror, you have to, you have to ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, what level of difficulty am I going to toss at my characters right now? Now you can't at the beginning of, well, I guess at the beginning of the book, you can toss a fairly high level of difficulty at them just to kind of launch it. But you can't constantly, constantly be throwing level 10 difficulties at them because you're going to exhaust your readers. And I mean, let's face it. If you have a character, a main character that can always manage to get around or succeed to solve level 10 difficulties constantly, then all of a sudden you've kind of crafted an unbelievable character. Because these aren't superhumans. These aren't superheroes. These are just normal people. So ask yourself, if I had from level zero to 10 difficulty, what level could I feasibly handle? Me, as a writer, as a person, what level of difficulty could I feasibly handle from zero to 10? 
I have probably in my life experienced maybe level seven difficulty, maybe. Especially given some of the people that I've had in my life and known the experiences they have. I, I've known people that have experienced level 10 difficulty. And it's, it's profound and life-changing. So I could handle maybe, or I've experienced maybe a seven. What could I handle? Could I handle a level 10 difficulty? And if so, how many of those level 10 difficulties could I handle? Me, as a person. And once you start getting a grasp on that, you get a better idea of what your characters can handle. Then, you, of course, you want to have your main character be able to handle a level 10 difficulty. You want to write those characters that, that if they were in a video game, they would succeed fantastically. They would never have, they would, they would constantly be getting power ups. They would, you never have to start all over and, and they would always know exactly where the, the game saves were. But that's not really realistic. So you need to have characters that are realistic in their ability to handle difficulty. You need to have a realistic level of difficulty that you throw at the characters. And you need to make sure that when your characters are approaching these difficulties, that they do so in a realistic way. Yes, you expect, I expect that readers that are reading my books, they're reading fiction, they're reading horror or, or post-apocalyptic genre books, I expect them to suspend a certain level of disbelief. They have to, because the nameless doesn't exist. Zombies don't exist. Shiro doesn't exist. Oh, that maybe not. Well, yes, as in my book, as written in my book, Shiro doesn't exist. But even so, you have to be able to deliver something that is both at the same time believable and entertaining. I'm, I'm let's face it. If I were let's if I'm writing a post-apocalyptic novel and I'm just throwing level five difficulties at my characters, and at the climax, maybe there's a level seven difficulty. Now, I, as a writer, have experienced level seven difficulties and I've gone, I've made it through just fine. That is not very engaging. You're not going to make the reader go, oh! and you want to have those moments where the reader goes, oh no, is, are they going to make it? Are they going to survive? So that when they get through the experience, they're like, oh, wow, I'm so glad they made it through that. You don't want to have the readers getting up to that point where you're throwing this difficulty at them and going, well, they're going to, of course, they're going to survive. I mean, nothing's ever hard for these characters because this is the apocalypse. In the apocalypse, I would imagine the second you wake up in the morning, you're at a level five difficulty. And it's only uphill from there. So you've got to find that fine line between believable and, and too much. You don't want to exhaust your readers. I mean, unless that's your shtick. If your shtick is everybody dies and things are just impossible, uh, and if that's what you write, then chances are if you're, you, never, you don't write series <laughs> because somebody's got to live. So the moral of this story is I, I recognized that what I had written was problematic. And I never hesitate to go back and say, no, 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 no. And I think personally, and this is just my personal opinion, I think that is one of the reasons why I like to write the way I write. I, I edit as I go. Because had I thrown that level five difficulty in there and stuck with it 
and just continued writing the story and then eventually had to go back and edit it, that would fundamentally change the rest of the story arc. So, and I think that's that's part of the reason why I my writing style evolved into this kind of cause and effect method, because I can I go back and I can I, I fix something right away. And a lot of times I'll be writing and I'll go no 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 backspace backspace backspace, and I'll 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 realize immediately that what I'm writing is problematic and I'll fix it then and there. Because if I if I have a cause that is not in line with the universe that I've created or, or, or is, is unbelievable in its simplicity or its difficulty, and I continue on with that, the effect from that cause is going to be different when I go back and say, hmm, this cause is wrong. I got to fix this cause. So if, I, if this cause was originally a level five difficulty, and I cha change it to a level seven or eight difficulty, the effect from that is completely different than it was when it was a five. So if, I, if that cause and effect has changed in the story arc and the book is complete, when I go back and change that, every cause and effect after that point is going to change. So effectively, I have to rewrite the entire book. So I can go back it's sort of, I, I sort of take everything in, in these chunks, these cause and effect chunks. And I, I can, every day, every night, or every day, I look back on the cause and effect and say, does that, is that in line? And if it is, then I can go forward. And the effect from that is now the cause of the next scene. So it's like, Boop, 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 boop. And then everything kind of, it's like connect the dots between the causes and the effects. So if that's your style of writing, then you have to always be willing to, to be very critical of yourself, of what you've written the previous day and say, is it right or wrong? Does it fit or not? And if not, you got to fix it before you continue on. And you got to make sure that everything is believable within the universe that you've created. And you've got to apologize when you say something wrong, which is what I did. And speaking of which, obviously, uh, Hopetown is in the hands of my editor now. Whee! So, uh, no word from her yet, but that's not atypical. So hopefully I will hear something back soon and uh, Hope Town will be available probably sometime late January, maybe. We can always hope. We can always hope. Anyway, Muse, it's a pleasure chatting with you as always. And uh, I hope that, um, I, I know it's the holiday season. Uh, in fact, next week is, is, is the big big kahuna of holidays for this country, for the, the, for, you know, capitalism, I guess. And I hope that you and your other muses have a good holiday. I don't know what to do. You just sit around and drink eggnog and, and, and bash your writers or do you exchange gifts? And what does it, what does a muse give another muse? I don't know. Anyway, thank you, muse. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Whatever it is that you say to yourself. Just continue being awesome.